G'day everyone, if you're new here, my name's Sam and it's dark and gloomy outside today. I've been running throughout the week and I'm feeling really, really tight. So, can't go outside and run. So what we're going to do is work through a series of stretches and poses to help release after a run. So hitting all those target areas that always get really, really tight after a run. So we're thinking Achilles tendons, calves, shins, hamstrings, the quads, psoas, hip flexors, and of course, low back and glutes. So we will use two blocks for today's practice. So get yourself some blocks, and when you're ready, we'll take off the runners and jump on the mat. Today's practice will begin in child's pose. Send your hips back towards your heels, separate your knees slightly, walk your arms forward, and just allow yourself to fold over your thighs. So today's practice is specific. Our intention is to find relief after our running practice. Trying to hit all those target points, the ankles, calves, the shins, quads, glutes, hips, low back. And we're just trying to find our breath before we start to move throughout the poses. Just take three inhales here. And then three gentle exhales. Two more. Last step. And we'll slowly start to lift our head. Keep your hips back towards your heels. Just start to walk both hands off towards the left hand side. Interlace your right fingers on top of your left and then press your left palm into the floor as you pull your right hand back towards you. So we're stretching deeper into the right hand side of the body. You might even be able to flex your right bicep a little bit there and bend the right elbow slightly, really to target the right side of the body there. Take an in breath. And the exhale will release, start to walk off towards the opposite side. So hands walk off to right, left fingers will interlace on top of the right and then push your right palm into the floor as you pull your left hand back towards you. Little flex through the bicep there. And gently come back through center. Lift the chest, sit the hips back on top of the heels. So if you can, have your hips on top of your heels and your knees drawing together here. We're just going to use the fingertips here, either side of the hips. See if you can lean back slightly and just lift your right knee off the floor. So stretching out through the front of that ankle into those muscles of the shin, tibialis anterior gets so tight, especially after running. We'll lower the right knee, we'll lift the left. And try not to overthink any of these movements, we know they serve a purpose, so there's no particular alignment we're trying to find today, we're just trying to find a stretch. Nice. If that works, see if you can lean back, maybe lifting both knees up and off the mat. So use your hands for support as much as you need. If there's space for you to lift the hands there, you can just interlace the hands and rest them on the lap. So good to strengthen the ankle as well as get that stretch. Try not to force it. If you go back too far, it can be really tricky trying to stop yourself if you fall. And use the fingers to gently lower yourself down. From here, we'll keep that left leg where it is, bend up the right knee and just ground your right foot down so that your right foot is roughly in line with your left knee, maybe a little bit further back. Now we're going to use our own body weight, so rest the right side rib cage, right side chest against your right thigh and lean forwards. So you're working to use your body weight to send your right knee in front of your right foot. Now dependent on your ankle flexibility, that will depend how far you can go forward. But again, you're in complete control. It's your body weight. You can just wrap your arms around your right leg and lean your chin onto your right knee. So 
So the further we take the knee in front of the foot, the greater the ankle flexion we're finding there. And we're really trying to lengthen through the Achilles tendons into the back of the calf there. And because you have the, the pressure of your torso resting on your thigh, of your hamstring pressing into your calf, you get a little almost massage for the calf muscle as well. Take one last breath there. And we use the fingertips just to swap. So set the right knee down, bend up the left leg, have the left foot in line with the right knee, maybe a little bit further back. You'll see a little bit better here on the screen as we lean our weight forward. We like to take the knee in front of the ankle, any amount, an amount that works for you. And rest your cheek or your chin down against your left knee and just start to lean forwards. So not trying to push, instead we're just letting gravity and time do their job here. Keep the breath steady. Working the dorsiflexion of the ankle, more we lean forward, more the calf muscles getting a stretch, more the Achilles tendons are getting a stretch. Last breath in. Nice one. Then from here, ground the fingers down. We'll take knees together, tuck the toes under, and send the hips back towards the heels. So you've got your toes tucking under here to stretch out through the bottoms of the feet. Now if you can, spin your heels away from one another to start with, to stretch out through your pinky toe, the fourth toe. And then spin, spin, spin. The heels towards each other to stretch out through the big toe. It's probably going to be a little bit tighter under that big toe. And fingertips shuffle a little closer towards the knees. We hover the knees off the mat, resting your rib cage, your chest against your thighs, reaching your arms out in front of you. Now, because we work to lengthen the calves and the Achilles tendons one leg at a time before, We'll see if we can do it simultaneously here. You're going to use your fingers for support as much as you need. You're just going to start to walk backwards so that your heels get a little bit closer towards the floor. Now, you know where your, your sticking point is, where your edge is, so you take yourself there. If it's possible for your heels to rest on the floor, then you let your heels rest on the floor. If they're still hovering, they're still hovering. It doesn't matter. You drop to chin to chest wherever you are. And if there's space, Take the hands to the back of the head. Take one last breath in. And we'll gently start to lift the head from here. Knees will drop down to the floor. Left leg will stay where it is. See if you can step your right foot a little wider than your right hand here. Drop your palms down flat onto the mat. If you needed your blocks underneath your hands here, you just take them and pop them underneath your hands. Now we don't want this left hip to be directly above the left knee. Instead, we want to tuck the left toes under and try and lengthen the left knee backwards to get into the front of that left hip, into your psoas muscles. Flexing into your left glute, pulling your chest forwards and just letting that right knee and right toes turn out towards the right hand side a little bit here. Take an inhale breath. On the exhale, we'll work to guide the hips back. Straighten the right leg. As we do, see if your right toes can lift off the mat and see if you can flex into your right quads. And then we'll try it two more times just like that. So let the inhale re-bend the knee and lift the chest. And the exhale, take the hips back. Straighten the right leg and drop the head. One more time. So super important not to rush, but instead to take your time. The rushing is done once the run stops. For now, it's our chance to slow down. Rebend the right knee, 
fall to the outside edge of the foot now, so really let that right knee fall out, and then push through your left hand to reach your right arm up towards the sky. So we're working to lengthen that left knee as far back as we can. If you know you have more space here in this shape, we're going to find a quad stretch, so reach your right arm to the back of the room, bend up your left knee, and maybe the foot's there for you to catch. If you've got the foot, we want to roll the right shoulder back and draw the left heel in towards the left glute to really release through the left quads here. All the while still falling off onto the outside edge of that right foot and allowing that right knee to open. Take one last breath. As you exhale, squeeze the foot in a little more. Then gently releasing the foot. See if you can just lower both forearms onto the floor. We won't be here for long. I know there's a lot going on here on the hips. If you wanted even a little more, you could lift your back knee in the air for a moment, flex into your left quads. Left glute working as well. Flex the arms, push away from the floor. Take one last breath. And gently lower the left knee down. Come back onto the hands. Just take your right leg back to meet your left. We'll sit the hips back on top of the heels, giving yourself a moment just to reacclimate, giving the legs a chance to rest. Find your breath, breathe in. One more breath like that. As you open your eyes, this is where we'll use our blocks. So take your blocks towards the top of the mat. We're going to set up towards a pigeon pose. So with the fingertips resting in front of you, cross your right leg in front of you. Right shin's possibly going to be on a 45 degree angle. Now one of those blocks is going to go in front of you. You can just pop it on the lower side to start with. And then the second block is going to go underneath your left quads, underneath your left thigh. So tucking under your left toes, lift your left knee in the air and position that block so it's above your knee. So the kneecap's not resting on the block, but instead the front of your quad is. And then as you start to walk your way forwards, and you have that block in front of you, you can rest your forehead onto the block. So we want this right knee to be opening out a little wider than everything else on the right hand side of the body. And we want the left leg continuing to extend back behind us. So using the blocks is just going to give us a little more out of the quad. If you feel as though your right hip needs a little more support, the block that's underneath your head, you can take and shift underneath your right hip just to give you a little bit more support. If that's the case, we we'll have to walk the arms out in front of us, maybe drop the head. Now this is where the fun will start. If you've got the quads resting on that block, we're going to work to bend up the left knee. Squeeze the left heel in towards the glutes. Still sending the hips back as best we can. And then if you can, work to lift your chest. So you're pushing your hips back in space. If you feel comfortable, you feel stable, reach back with the left hand, work to catch the outside of the left ankle and gently draw the left heel a little closer in towards the left glutes there. Deep, deep, deep stretch for the left quads. Last breath in. Then mindfully, without slingshotting, release the foot or the elbows down. We'll gently remove the blocks. So roll off onto your right hip. You can shift the blocks out of the way. And we'll just fall over the right thigh here for a moment in deer pose. And letting your body weight just melt against the inside of your right thigh. Feeling the stretch down the outside of your thigh into the hip. Last breath in. And we'll walk the hands back towards us. Try and keep your right leg where it is for a moment. Swing your left leg out in front of you. If you can, set your left foot outside your right thigh. Lift your bottom and lower it back down so you know the sitting bones are equally grounded. Then take your right arm to wrap around your left leg. Look to gently twist your torso off to the left-hand side. Taking your left fingertips just to rest behind you here. 
and maybe looking back over your left shoulder. So as you hug that leg, try and still keep your left sitting bone grounded. This will just give you a deep release into the left glute there. And we'll come back through center. We're going to work to cross the left knee on top of the right. So it'll take a little bit of shuffling. Use the fingertips. Try and shuffle your right knee a little closer to the center and wiggle your left knee on top. You might even like to lift your hips just to get that left knee on a little more and sit your hips back down. From here, you allow yourself just to fold over the thighs. Any amount, an amount that is comfortable, an amount that is sustainable. Breath together. Let it out. And we'll begin to rise, use the fingertips here. If you can, just unravel your left foot, set it towards the left hand side of the mat, and lean forward onto your fingertips, lengthen your right knee backwards, and we'll arrive on the opposite side. So working to wiggle the left toes out towards the left hand side a little, lengthen the right knee back, and lift the chest up nice and high. Take an inhale breath. On your out breath, send the hips back, straighten through the left leg. See if the left toes can lift off the mat. And let your head drop down. Your leg may not be straight at all. It may still have a strong bend in the knee if the hamstring's tight. Be okay with that. Let's go two more. Last one. As you re-bend that left knee, really falling off onto the outside edge of that left foot this time, pushing through the right hand, reaching the left arm up. If there's space, reach back, bend the right knee, catch hold of the outside of the foot. Squeeze the heel in, keep peeling the left shoulder back. Be okay with things being uncomfortable. Be okay with things being tight. It's completely understandable. If you're putting endless kilometers on the feet or on the treadmill, on the road, obviously things are going to tighten up. We have to put just as much effort into stretching as we do the running. Gently release the right foot. If you can, lower both forearms onto the mat. If they don't lower down, just stay on the hands. All good in the hood. There's a little more, we just lift the back knee in the air, we won't be here for long. Let's count out five, four, three, two, and one. Lower the back knee down. Come onto the fingertips, send your left leg back to meet the right. We'll just sit the hips back on top of the heels for a moment again, just countering. Feels so good. Even the knees, a chance to really flex here. Chance for you to refine that breath. Together we breathe. Let it out. And setting up for our pigeon pose here on the left hand side. So cross that left chin in front of you. Extend the right leg back behind you. And then prepare your blocks. You can start with one underneath the forehead. The second block will go underneath your right quad. So just above the knee. Again, if it takes a little bit of fiddling to get it there, you'd rather fiddle 10 or 15 times than be uncomfortable in the first place you've put yourself. So left knee a little wider than everything else. If it feels as though you're falling forward, we wanna send the hips back. So we're continuing to move the hips backwards to allow a deeper release through the outside of that left hip. And again, you can rest your forehead onto the block. If you feel like your left hip needs a little more support, you just place that block underneath the outside of the left hip. Under the forearms for a moment 
see if we can bend up the right knee, flexing the foot, squeezing the heel in. If that works, press into the hands. We push to lift our elbows off the mat. And if all this feels okay, left hand stays where it is, reach back with the right hand. See if you can catch hold of the outside of the right ankle, squeezing that glute in. So using your left hand to press your hips back, so left hip is finding the block underneath you. I think one last breath in. And again, very mindfully, we release the foot. And forearm soften down. And then we work to remove our blocks. Just setting them off towards the side, but don't lose them. We will use them again later. Falling off onto your left hip into that deer pose setup. So just allowing the weight of your body to rest against your left thigh for a moment. As we shift hands back towards us, work to keep the left leg where it is. Swing the right leg out in front. See if you can ground right foot outside the left thigh and lift and lower your hips so you're nice and evenly planted. And left arm's going to wrap around the right leg. Take a gentle twist, sending the right fingertips behind you, gazing back over the right shoulder. As we come back through center, working to get right knee on top of left as best we can. So leaning forward, shuffling, shuffling, taking that right knee over the top, leaning hips back towards the floor and folding. We slowly begin to rise. From here, we're just going to extend the legs out nice and long in front of us. Give the legs a shake out. Adjust your sitting bones so they feel even and shake out through the feet. We'll flex the feet towards the face. Reach the arms up nice and high. Take a breath in. As you exhale, we're going to fold forward from the center. So feel your rib cage rest against your thighs. You may need to readjust your sitting bones along the way down. If you look at the feet and they start to roll towards each other, see if you can press the inner part of your foot, the ball joint of the big toe forwards, and spin the calf muscles away from each other. <laughs> spin the pinky toes away from each other, I should say. The calf muscles, if they're really, really tight, that's going to be hard. That's where my words got confused there. So it's going to be really challenging to stamp the ball joint of the big toe forwards and spin the pinky toes away from each other if those calves are really tight. That's why it's important that we give it a try. The crown of the head, reach forwards towards the toes. See if you can flex your quads in this position if the legs are straight. One last breath. Lift up towards the seat. Scoot your bum towards the top edge of your mat. Take your blocks, we'll lower down onto the back. The blocks are going to stack on top of each other on the lowest side. So bend up the knees, ground the feet underneath your knees, and then lift your hips and set those blocks underneath your sit bones. Once they feel comfortable and grounded, we'll extend the legs out nice and long and have the feet wider than the hips. Intention here to lengthen through the psoas, through the hip flexors. Once you feel comfortable, reach the arms back behind you. So as we lengthen and extend through the front of the body, you can amplify this sensation by flexing into the glutes. So squeeze one glute at a time. To feel a deeper release through in front of the hips. And just shuffle your left foot a little closer to the center. Take your arms down by the side, bend up your right knee. You're gonna work to catch hold of the back of the right hamstring and just give it a gentle squeeze in towards you. 
So if you can, keep drawing the right knee towards you and see if your left heel can just hover off the mat. So you're working to extend your left leg as far forward as you can as you bring the right leg closer towards you. And if this feels okay, you can work to straighten your right leg. So essentially trying to split the legs in the air. Left heel still hovering, right leg drawing towards you. Take your breath in. And gently soften your left heel down. Rebend your right knee. Release the right leg. And we swap. So extending the right leg out nice and long. Bending up the left knee. See if you can catch hold of the back of the hamstring. Drawing that left knee in towards you. Maybe hovering that right foot off the mat. If this feels okay, work to straighten through that left leg. Keep drawing it towards you. Keep taking the right leg away from you. Split the legs as best you can. One last breath. And soften the right foot down. Rebend the left knee. Setting left foot down underneath the left knee. Sliding that right foot in to meet the left. And lifting the hips to remove your blocks. Take one block on either side. As your hips soften down, Reach your arms up towards the sky. See if you can take your feet to meet your hands. Now draw the knees towards the outside of the armpits. Have the balls of the feet pointing up towards the ceiling. And see if you can keep as much of your spine grounded on the mat here as you move from side to side gently. Now if this is comfortable for you, I encourage you to see if you can straighten the legs, straddling them out wide. Flexing into the quads, flexing into the feet. Take one final breath. As we exhale, we'll gently release, taking soles of feet together, letting the knees fall out wide. Now those blocks you placed on either side will rest underneath your knees to allow your hips to release. Now if you have time and space today, I encourage you to lay here. Give yourself around three to five minutes to really let the hips relax and soften and to feel the low back ground onto the mat. If this is where your practice ends for today, then I thank you so much for joining. If you can, gently lift the head off the mat, interlace your hands and just cradle the back of your head in your hands. Trying to move gently from side to side. You might feel left shoulder blade ground down as right shoulder blade lifts. And coming back through center. Right shoulder blade will ground, left shoulder blade lifts. Getting a little more comfortable with the length of the spine grounding. And release your head back down. And take the arms by side. Now I know I myself am feeling a lot more stretched out. My body was feeling super tight when I first began. So hopefully you're feeling some relief too. Comment down below if this did hit those target areas, if you are a runner, if you feel like we've missed anything, let me know. Or if you're a runner, just drop a comment below. You can give yourself the time and space to rest here. As always, I'll see you again soon. Peace.